You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and it's a beautiful day here in Albuquerque. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. <laughs> That's what I get for going off the rails a little bit on what I normally say. I'm glad you're hanging out with us today. Thank you. Definitely glad that you you are here, and thank you again. We've got a uh, pretty short, another short one for you today uh, kind of about who controls the airspace and uh, what happens when your city says don't fly over the lake because because it's annoying and uh, I've got sensitive ears so <laughs> well I'm, I'm looking forward to a quick chat about this because I think you could actually make the counter argument to disturbing the peace but let's uh, get into the question first sounds good it is to my understanding that the United States federal government has exclusive sovereignty of all U.S. airspace. I live in a city that has various ordinances. One of these ordinances is referred to as the Prohibited Activities Generally Code. It states the following, No person shall operate a boat or do any other thing around the city lake in a dangerous and reckless manner, nor shall any person do anything which disturbs the peace of those making lawful use of the lake and adjoining areas. Question, if I was flying my drone in the airspace over this lake, could the city impose a fine if in their opinion, the drone disturbed the peace of others while making lawful use of the lake? Question mark. Hmm. So this is a fun one, Paul. It's easy to get ramped up on something like this. But Donald, it is a good question. And uh, man, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. There are a lot of different ways that you can go with this. But uh, I think that there's actually, uh, you know, there's some some powerful information here. And, you know, kind of before we get into it, Rob, on uh, on what is and what isn't as far as the regulations here, mm -hmm. this also just goes to show why this lawsuit on remote ID is just so absolutely important because, you know, in that lawsuit, they are requiring the FAA to really define what is navigable airspace, right? which could really have an astronomical effect on the overall authority of airspace as a whole right? Um, and could really muddy the water in these particular situations. Yeah, it's interesting. But you know, one thing about this particular question that Donald has asked is that it doesn't actually mention drones. So he's extrapolating the concept of what this regulation is saying mm. and just trying to head it off at the pass. I, I suppose you'd say just like, can I be on my boat and have a boom box and play it really loud? Yeah. It's kind of the same question as that. Well, and I mean, I think that there is uh, there is a little credence for clauses like this because obviously uh, people don't want to be buzzed nice and low when they're on their boat or they're over the lake. You got a bunch of hot girls that have all their boats tied together, partying out at the lake. They don't want, you know, to be essentially harassed by drones. Yeah. Which is why flying close and low uh, for people who don't know that they're being filmed is definitely something that you guys want to stay away from. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people know that, but some of our newcomers here uh, don't know what they don't know, and sometimes it can cause an issue. But yeah, I think the reality is, so he asked the question, can they find me? And I think what he's really asking is, can they find me even though I'm in the air and the FAA has jurisdiction, theoretically? Technically, well, technically, so theoretically. Commerce Clause gave the FAA exclusive authority to regulate the airspace. So he is technically correct that the FAA is the only government body that can control the airspace. Right. And, we, and we do this for many reasons here in the States. But that said, you know, what he didn't, you know, I want to know further down in those laws about the lake if they talk about drones and if they talk about uh, takeoff and landing because they could inhibit takeoff and landing. That's the only thing that states, uh, local municipalities, counties could potentially regulate. Um, now, here's the thing. Here, let's get right to the question. 
let me ask you a question, Rob. Yeah. Do you think if some geriatric called into local government and complained about this guy flying his drone, do you think whether they had the authority or not, the local government would find this pilot? I think it's quite possible they would. A hundred percent in today's day and age with every government official literally pushing the boundaries of their authorities, it would not surprise me one bit. I mean, we just had yeah. our president shut down by the Supreme Court and then he did another order completely defying it. And then he was shut down by the Supreme Court again. I mean, I I think that we are in a very scary age um, in, in American government because we have checks and balances for a reason. And yeah. When, no matter whether it's the president or local governments, when they're constantly pushing their authority with the mentality of, I'm going to see what I can get away with until I get sued, we all lose. Like, we all suffer, you know? And yeah. I, I just don't think that that's clear, so. Yeah. So the way that I immediately think about this when a question like this comes in is that I would say that technically they they confine you, right? Um I think that language is so broad and frankly so vague that it would not be difficult for them to find a way to justify fining you. So ultimately it becomes a question of risk versus reward on your part, which is true of so many different elements of life, right? So if there's something that you want to do relative to that lake in terms of flying and it's worth it to you, then go for it. You just have to know that there's a possibility that you'd be fined. And that is with you being careful. And that is with you staying away from people. Although I will say most people that are on the lake, they're probably not aware of that regulation and and they're probably not going to go digging into it unless they're just a mean person, which of course you could certainly run into. But my point is, if you go fly, sounds like you're justified in doing so, that regulation suggests that you could be fined and then you just have to decide what are you going to do about it. If it's a $50 fine, a $500 fine, was it worth it to you? And are you willing, if you are fine and it's a larger fine, to push back and take them to court, right? I mean, so what are we willing to do to fight back? Because I think we oversimplify these questions mm -hmm. without thinking it all the way to its logical end and how it might impact you other than a $50 fine. And then I would actually say... If somebody's giving you a hard time and you're flying your drone and you're being careful and you're being safe and you've either done the trust certificate or your part 107 or whatever you need, then they might be disturbing your peace. Mm. Right? So it is technically who's harassment. To say? Yeah. A hundred percent. So there's just that's why oh, there's I'm too a, much va vaguity. <laughs> is that a word? I don't think it is vagueness mm. um, in regulations like that that uh, it's lazy. It's lazy legislating is Impetuous. what I think. Well, and we've learned the hard way that a lot of our regulators don't take the time to do their research. But that said, now, technically speaking, does this body of government have the authority to regulate you for operating in the airspace? And the technical answer is no. Um, and again, sir, what I would recommend is you go to the go to our site, thedroneu.com, and download the drone advocacy kit because that's going to really give you all the information that you need. Where the Fed set up the federal precedent, you have the memorandum, you've got a federal court case where the city of Newtown, uh, Massachusetts, really uh, pushed back against the Feds and tried to do their own thing, mm -hmm. um, and they lost in court. Uh, so it's a great precedent to to essentially provide to someone. Um, in addition, there is information to kind of help you communicate effectively and not egregiously because a lot of people don't um, respond well when people get defensive. Uh, so yeah. That said, another, th I think, key important part here is that, you know, even when it comes to the enforcement of airspace, rarely do the feds just charge someone with careless and reckless behavior. There is typically another hard indicator of the intent, whether the drone was registered or not, whether they had their trust certificate or not. So they typically go a little bit deeper and don't just enforce on careless and reckless behavior. Now that said, this goes to show why more and more pilots have been requesting information on what we call clandestine takeoffs and landings, you know, and flying really quiet drones and flying, you know, taking off and moving the opposite direction of where you're intending to go, 
you fly out maybe five feet, five feet high, a hundred feet out, and then go up mm -hmm. and get your shots and whatnot. That's why more and more people are flying clandestinely. And I think that's why most of our drones too are focused on the sound of, of yeah. these drones. But that said, could they find you? They could try. Do they have the authority to do it? Technically, no. Would you have to go to a higher court to potentially appeal the fine? The answer is yes. Um, but we are seeing a lot of these cases, Rob. I mean, if you go again on Jonathan Rupert's site and you see all the litigation that's currently in place, there is a lot of federal cases that are coming after local governments for overextending their authority. And yeah. uh, I would say for us drone pilots, it's refreshing to see because oftentimes um, the government is, you know, just trying to deal with a complaint. You know, most of the issues that come against drone pilots are brought up by either other drone pilots, other industry officials, or someone in the public who is complaining. I mean, that's yeah. pretty much how it happens. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. In this case, I mean, I think it's like always, it's just a matter of being respectful and, and respecting the peace of other people and, and them trying to enjoy their time on the lake. But there is nothing that even speaks to the prohibition against a drone specifically. Mm. So I would have no qualms about flying in this particular situation. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think this would actually be a great. Uh, yeah. I, I agree 100 percent, Rob. And frankly, there is a responsibility, right? As a pilot, you are ultimately yeah. responsible. And as long as you're flying responsibly and you're, you can prove it, right, you cache the video of your flight log on your phone so you always have that to prove uh, what you were doing, I think you're going to be fine. And frankly, it goes to show, too, that uh, conflict management classes are beneficial because I actually ran into a problem like this this weekend when I was up in Colorado. Mm flying over a golf course, trying to get a shot of a train for one of the courses that we're doing. And this golfer was like, you know how annoying that is on the golf course? And I said, well, you know what, sir? If you would have just saw the shot of the train I got, I think that you would understand. And then he said something that was like, rah, 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 rah. I'm like, we couldn't really understand. And I, I was a little egregious. And I said, sir, I, I, I think you're missing the point of the game of golf. It's about fun. <laughs> and no offense, dude, but based off of your uh, performance on this hole, it doesn't look like you're hitting the oh, PGA geez. anytime soon. So <laughs> I don't think they uh, teach that in the conflict resolution class. No, I don't class. think so either. <laughs> but I landed anyway uh, because I got my shot. I was done, right? I didn't need to be a pest. I mean, I was joking with Steve about how I wanted to throw the Nerf gun on the I-2 and go wait for that guy to hit the tee box on the next hole. But then we're breaking some laws oh, there. Man. So I will say, I just, man, people just need to lighten up. They do. I agree. But you know, one of the things that makes me think about as well with respect to Donald's question is what's the, uh, what's the environment where you live? Like what is the political environment? What, what is the, the leadership mm. makeup of the group that's running your city or, or municipality? Um, I don't know. That's probably something to be aware of as well. And, and, uh, I mean, you don't want to overthink it like I probably would do, but at the same time, they're just things to think about. But again, I would just go fly. Agreed. <laughs> be responsible. Yeah clandestinely take off, fly drones that are quiet and, uh, you know, give people their space, you know, but as long as you do those things, I think you'll be okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think if you're able to effectively communicate that in the case of you being fined and say, you know, look, we're, we're trying to give people space. We're trying to enjoy it. You know, the, the FAA controls the airspace and I'm technically following the guidelines. This goes to show why it's important to have a trust certificate if you're not commercial and to say like, look, I've done, yeah. I've done this show case is my intent of following the rules. By the way, shameless plug, if you need your trust certificate, you can go to faatrust.thedroneu.com and go get it. Indeed. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name's Rob. And my name is Paul. <laughs>